Hello and welcome back, and if you are new here, welcome, we are very glad to have you here. In this video we will demonstrate how to assemble acrylic case for DSO-138 oscilloscope. Before we begin, let's just give a quick overview of DSO-138 oscilloscope and why it is important to have a protection case. The DSO-138 oscilloscope is fairly cheap and functional oscilloscope for beginners and amateurs who are just starting to learn and experiment with electronic circuits and signals. It has one channel, meaning it can display only one signal at the time. There are basic functionalities for adjusting input voltage and frequency and basic info about signal being displayed, such as, frequency, minimum, maximum and point-to-point -point voltage, period and duty cycle and etc. In its basic configuration the oscilloscope comes as a kit or fully assembled product. However, in this basic configuration all of the electronic components are exposed and it is very easy to short circuit them accidentally or by mistake, leading to bricking oscilloscope for all intents and purposes. Also, the bottom side of circuit board exposes all the soldered points, and by placing the oscilloscope on conductive surface you are literally short-circuiting all of the soldered electronic components, again leading to bricking the device. In order to avoid this, let's get to business and see how to assemble case to protect our oscilloscope. Warning. Before you proceed with watching this video, please do not start to immediately assemble case. Please, watch the entire video. During the presentation, and at the end, we will point out some of the pitfalls that you might want to avoid when you attempt to assemble protective acrylic case by yourself. Please, pay close attention to remarks at the last portion of this video. Thank you very much for your attention. Please make sure that you have following parts in your kit, number 1, 4 pieces of bottom caps, number 2, 4 pieces of long screws, number 3, 4 pieces of small hex nuts, number 4, 4 pieces of small screws for fixing the display, number 5, 8 bigger hex nuts, number 6, 4 pieces of sliders caps, you will only need 3, 1 is spare, number 7, 6 push button caps, you will only need 5, 1 is spare, 1 screen plate, 2 spacer plates, top and bottom plate, 4 pieces of side plates, oscilloscope and probe. If you have a pair of tweezers, you will find them more than handy, given that screws and hex nuts are fairly small and fidgety to handle. Next, using utility knife remove protective film from acrylic plates and push buttons and sliders caps. Be careful not to scrape acrylic plates. A good suggestion is that you start to peel off protective film from outer edges of plates, using utility knife. When you are done you should have all your plates and cover caps clear of protective film and ready to assemble. The first step is to remove display from assembly. Carefully lift display from assembly by pulling the display up, until it clears from socket. Make sure you apply equal pressure when lifting the display in order not to bend connectors placed under the display. When done, set the display aside. Now, take the screen plate and place the display onto the plate, make sure that the display and the plate are orientated as shown on the photo. Use the four smaller screws and hex nuts to bolt the display onto the plate. Here, you will find pair of tweezers handy, given that screws and hex nuts are very small. Take care not to screw the display too tightly to the plate, it is not necessary, you just need to make sure that the display is in place and not moving around. Tightening the screws too much may cause acrylic plate to break. Now, take the plate with mounted display and put the display back onto the board, again, making sure that you align pins so that you do not bend them. If you have carefully followed the outline steps, the plate and display should easily slide back into the display socket on the board. Next, take two spacer plates and put both of them onto the display, making sure that the cutouts on the plates align with sliders on the left, and push buttons on the right. The display should be clearly visible, 
and unobstructed, in the middle cutout of the spacer's plates. Now, take the sliders and push buttons caps and mount them through cutouts on the plates. Make sure that sliders caps are mounted in such way that caps hook onto the sliders and are able to slide freely in all of the three positions, left, middle, and right. Test them to see if that is the case. The push buttons caps should also easily and freely move to provide tactile response when push button is pressed. Make sure to place push button caps on four buttons on the right and reset button at the bottom right of the oscilloscope. Take the top plate and place it on the top of screen. Make sure that the cutouts are aligned properly. Now, all of the sliders and push button caps are covered by the top plate and secured in their final position. Before bolting everything in place, make sure that sliders caps can move sliders and check push button caps as well. You may use a rubber band to help you secure and fix all plates. Now thread all of the four long screws through appropriate holes in top plate and board. Use four of the eight bigger hex nuts to first secure acrylic plates and sandwich them together. Use remaining four bigger hex nuts to fix oscilloscope board and top plate. Again, make sure not to over tight the screws and hex nuts. If you do that you risk to make two errors. First, you can shatter the acrylic plate, and second, you will not be able to slide caps for sliders and push button caps will not move. If any of these occur, untighten the screws and hex nuts just a little bit. Again, you need to screw everything only as much as not to move. You do not want or need to over tight any of the screws. Your assembly should be as shown on the photos. Again, before moving to assemble bottom part of the case, Double and triple check that all the sliders and push button caps can freely move and are fully functional. Using remaining bottom and side plates assemble the bottom part of oscilloscope housing. First, take back plate, the one with cutouts for probe and power supply, and mount it on the rest of the assembly. Sliding the oscilloscope aftermath would be difficult because perturbing probe connector. Next, take three remaining side plates and assemble them. To make your life easier, place the oscilloscope top side down, when doing this part of case build. And finally, take the bottom plate and place it so that screws fit through the appropriate holes in bottom plate and all side plates lock into the position. Use bottom caps to screw in place bottom plate. Bottom caps also double as legs for the entire mount. Again, make sure you do not over tight bottom caps. Tighten them only as much as to hold everything in place. Your final case build should look like as shown on photos. Everything should fit nice and lock in place. The only thing left is to power up your oscilloscope and provide suitable input signal to display. Well, if you have been patient and watched this entire video, here is your reward. This video was inspired and influenced by many of YouTube's creators and their videos addressing this exact same scenario, assembling acrylic case for DSO-138 oscilloscope. Some of creators have channels that have tens of thousands of subscribers, some even more, and their videos on this subject matter boast thousands, even, tens of thousands of views, some even more. Strangely enough, and this may come as a shock to you, and at this point I really do sympathize with you, each and every creator that assembled case like this is wrong. This is not the way to assemble this case. During this video presentation you have witnessed situations that borders to insanity. Threading those long screws through assembly, and then tightening first for hex nuts that hold display plate, spacer plates, and top plate, is almost impossible mission. Who in a right frame of mind would engineer something as convoluted as that? Next, imagine that at some point in time, dust and particles will invariably find their way under the top plate and dirty up the display. Now, in order to clean the display, you will need to disassemble every last screw, hex nut and plate of the case. When assembling case like this, the top plate, one that covers the display, is last one to be disassembled.
The next logical question is, why do I have screws heads facing me, and screw caps are playing role of legs? Shouldn't that be another way around? Caps are more aesthetically pleasing, shouldn't they be on the top, and screws, invisible at the bottom? Kinda makes more sense, doesn't it? Next pitfall is calibration. If, at some future point in time, you find yourself in need to recalibrate the oscilloscope using internal square signal generator and variable capacitors marked C4 and C6, there is no way to access them. Again, you are facing the same situation as with dust. In order to recalibrate the oscilloscope, you will need to disassemble every last screw, hex nut and plate of the case. When assembling case like this, the top plate, one that covers the display is last one to be disassembled. Next pitfall is access to internal square signal generator. It is impossible that such an important connector is not accessible via some opening in the case. Well, there is certainly an opening at the back of the case, but it is in wrong position. You cannot use probe's alligator clip to access it. Why would anyone make an opening in the case for that specific reason and put it in a wrong place? Well, it is not that that the opening is in wrong place, rather than that it is the entire oscilloscope that is in the wrong place inside of the case. You may have seen in some other tutorials, that all those tough masculine manly men solved this problem by happily soldering a piece of wire that now sticks through the case. I was also expecting them to solder one beloved 10K resistor, just for the real man's touch. Really, but I mean, really. And last, but not least, that pointless USB connector is in wrong place, or more precisely, the opening in case is in wrong position. Again, it is not the opening that is in wrong position, it is entire oscilloscope that is wrongfully mounted inside the case. Not to nitpick any further, I think I have made my point. Of course, this entire video would be exercise in futility if, this time, I would not offer a real and genuine tutorial how to rightfully assemble protective acrylic case for DSO-138 oscilloscope. So, in next video we will do exactly that. Please, before you leave, show your appreciation by liking this video, sharing it, leaving a comment, and consider subscribing. Thank you, and see you next time. Bye.